Can you edit video on a 2014 Mac Mini? In my previous video, I used this 2014 Mac Mini for everyday tasks, and it passed with flying colors. Now it's time to turn it up. Can you edit on this nine-year-old machine? Let's see what we can do. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple, the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, please give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and more importantly, turn on that notification bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. Thank you. I know what you're probably thinking. There is no way this can be any kind of use to someone who edits videos. I would agree with that statement. I don't think this machine can handle a typical edit that I would do for YouTube. My 2020 M1 Mac Mini had minor issues when my edits got more intense. However, not everybody needs it for intense editing. What if you're just bumping clips together with some transitions for a school project or a family video? Maybe this machine could handle it. There's only one way to find out. Let's revisit the specs on this machine if you missed my last video, which I'll link in the description. It's got a 3.0 gigahertz dual core Intel i7, a 2.8 gigahertz Intel Iris graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. I don't think 256 gigs of storage will be an issue for most people who are bringing in some footage to edit on the machine. Let's see how it works editing iPhone footage. That's about five gigs. I started off by selecting the footage that I want to import, but I also want to make some changes to the settings to save some space and stress on the machine. I want to leave the footage in place to help save room from duplicating the project. The internal drive is how you'll be accessing the footage anyway. Our next thing is under transcode section, which is going to create proxy media. This will allow copies of the media optimized for smaller file size and faster editing performance, which we need all the help we can get. I'm also going to limit the frame size 25% to see if it can help a little bit more. As you can see, I'm just playing the footage in the library and it's already laggy. This is not a good sign. I'm gonna create a project and set it to 1080p to try to again, limit the amount of lagging that we just saw in the library. I also wanna turn off background rendering since I don't really need the system to be bogged down any more than it already is while I'm doing the playback and editing the clips. Well, as you can see, it plays. Barely. If you were to select clips that you need and keep the timeline size down, it might help, but it's going to be laggy until you render it out. But the second that you add more files, text, or transitions, it will need to be rendered out to allow the footage to play lag free. If you have something else to do while it's rendering, this might work. But if you need something quick and want to see what your additions are going to look like when they run, this isn't going to work. Ooh, okay, um, that didn't go well at all. Maybe someone out there would be patient enough to work like that, but I'm not. <laughs> so I have an idea to see if we can make this a little more usable. Probably not, but hey, we won't know if we don't try, right? This 2014 Mini holds a little secret. Well, a secret to me, and maybe not to anyone else, but here goes. The motherboard has a port that allows this $12 part to be connected to it. What this connector does, it allows you to use an NVMe SSD. Now the speeds on the drive are currently okay. They obviously allow us to do what we did in the other video pretty well. Editing? Maybe it could have been more than just the SSD, but I want to see. And while I'm in there, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the 256 SSD with this OWC one terabyte SSD and maybe it'll help work a little bit faster. In my other videos, the discussion came up about external storage being an option for the M1 and the M2 platforms. While those solutions are great to get around the big upgrade price tag, in this situation, it's not a good choice. Why? The IO ports on this machine aren't the fastest, though I mean, they used to be the fastest, but now they're not. It does have two Thunderbolt 2 ports that will work with speeds up to 20 gigabits per second and four USB 3.0 ports for up to five gigabits per second. The external enclosure that I used works really well with Thunderbolt 4, 
but is severely limited by these connections. The speeds are actually slower than my internal SSD because I gotta go through the standard USB-A ports. So now that our upgrades are in place, let's go ahead and jump over to the machine and see if we have any improvements. Okay, so I am being cautiously optimistic here because I just, after the last test, I just don't know. So we shall see. So the footage is in and right now it is transcoding as you can see right there. The other thing I wanna do real quick here is turn off background editing. So we don't have any issues there. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna go ahead and make this 1080. We're gonna leave it 1080 just like the test before. And as far as this footage goes, let's see here in the test. It's, it's skipping just like before. So let's, let's see how it goes here. We'll drop it in. It's playing a little better. I, I wouldn't say that it's light years better. Another failure. The footage played a little better, maybe, but still the same painfully slow process. I'm not done though. I have one more idea. I shot some 1080p footage and loaded it in the exact same way I did for the other tests. So these are the results when I started editing. Right now we have our project preview up here and you guys know before that it was skipping and stuttering. So we're waiting. Right there. It's at 23%. Look at that. She is working perfectly. So let's drop the whole thing in the timeline and let's see how it plays. Do. Um, there you go, guys. Every time I start doing something, it pauses. I am super pumped. It's playing just fine. There is no skipping. There is no jumping. If I were to take a clip and I were to pick it up and change places here, or if I wanted to go ahead and add a transition in here, it is has the dots up there that it needs to be rendered. So Let's see how it works. Kind of sit here. And boom. Oops. It isn't rendered, but it is allowing me to continue to work. It's playing it smoothly. You see up there we've got the we got the dots going that it needs to be rendered. Let's see what it does. The fact that every time Look at that. Pauses, That's the work. slowest transition ever, but it is smooth, it is clean, you're able to see exactly what you're doing, and it works just great. Let's say I go ahead and uh, drop in some text. Same thing, the text is at a point where it needs to be rendered, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in test, and that text is in there. And you will see it did here, skip a little bit and you will see here, the first time. Let's see if it plays felt fine there. It does go a little bit laggy there, but that is 10 times better than what we had before. I am super happy with how that turned out. Yeah, it's a bummer that 4K is so painfully slow. And I mean, you can do it, it's just gonna take a while. But let's be honest, 1080p is just fine for most people anyway. And this machine is nine years old. On a side note, when I took apart the Mac Mini, it wasn't the standard 2.5 inch SSD that I thought it was. It actually was the Apple SSD with the NVMe driver, but a different style uh, that was installed in there from the factory. Now, the speeds were just a little bit slower than what I have now, but I, I really don't see much of a performance difference. Now that I think about it, if I shot the other footage in 1080, it may have worked too. Now, you may not be worried about editing on this machine. You may just want it as a daily task driver. I did a video on how that performed. Go ahead and check it out right here. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you won't miss my next video. See ya.